the Gronk bus going to be in Miami for the Super Bowl. Yeah, but uh, I'm a, going to the Super Bowl now, no matter what. As a Patriot, I, this, this didn't excite me, though. I was hoping, what do you mean? I was hoping he was saying he was coming back to join the team or something. like. Oh, yeah, he's coming. That's not a big announcement, though. Everybody already knows that. Why would he make an announcement? So we're just waiting. Yeah, he'll be here. I think the deadline is like November 30th. I think I read that on on Twitter. Yeah, book it, whatever you want. Don't book it on my credit line, but he'll be back. What's up, everybody? We're back. Episode number 11. Season two, double coverage with the McCourty. Season's twins. moving, huh? Yeah, it is. It's fun. the football season, the podcast season. It's all, it's all just flowing. They go hand in uh, hand. But as you guys know, we're here. Uh, you can find us on YouTube, iTunes, Spotify. Mama, we made it. Yep, all those podcasts and things. All you have to do is search double coverage with the McCourty twins. And also, in addition to that, we're on social media. Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, at McCourty Twins. Quick shout out to our partners uh, here at Double Coverage, Boston Medical Center, Embrace Kids Foundation. Uh, we've all come together to tackle sickle cell, uh, the disease, and you can learn more at tacklesicklecell.org. And also shout out to our friends over at Normatech. Uh, anywhere athletes are redefining their potential, Normatech recovery systems are helping them to push boundaries and exceed their goals, recover faster, increase circulation, and conquer sore muscles with Normatech, the ultimate recovery for today's athlete. If you guys want to check them out, get more info, order yourself one, all you have to do is visit uh, www.normatechrecovery.com and you'll get all of that great information. That is always key, sore muscles after the game. Uh, especially now that it's cold out, muscles don't really like that. Now that you're old, so you got it. Muscles don't like that. A little that. tougher to recover. But breaking news, let's start off with what everybody is disappointed. This is why, this is why they're, they're watching us to this Disappointed week. to hear. Uh, Gronkowski said on whatever day that was, Saturday, Friday, I don't know what day it was, but he had a huge announcement, or maybe it was Monday, I don't know, a huge announcement coming Tuesday morning, and everybody erupted, and they couldn't wait for Gronk to be announcing that he'd and be back. We are now Tuesday at 4.35, if anyone's wondering, and, and Gronk has, has made his announcement. Yes, his announcement. And it is what the people were hoping for, was he, it not? He's throwing a Super Bowl party in Miami. All party people are so hyped to know party city, party person, the Gronk bus going to be in Miami for the Super Bowl. Yeah, but... Uh, as I'm a, going to the Super Bowl now, no matter what. As a Patriot, I, this, this didn't excite me, though. I was hoping, what do you mean? I was hoping he was saying he was coming back to join the team or something. Like, Oh, yeah, he's coming. That's not a big announcement, though. Everybody already knows that. So Why would he make an announcement? So we're just waiting. Yeah, he'll be here. I think the deadline is, like, November 30th. I think I read that on Twitter. sending that to the bank on Twitter. it? Yeah, book it, whatever you want. Don't book it on my credit line, but he'll be back. Yeah, I've been told you. I told them in group chat on Friday. I was like, yeah, Gronk will be back. Miles Garrett suspended indefinitely uh, after the melee. We'll, we'll, get, we'll get into that later on in the show. Uh, but the cap, cap. It is going to be a funny coincidence that we're going to talk about for that sure, Kaepernick. Sure. I mean, Kaepernick, about that Miles, Miles Garrett, Garrett situation yeah, today. Uh, the Kaepernick workout did not go as planned. We'll get right into it. Um, obviously, all you guys know, uh, Cap in the league set up a workout on Saturday. He won the um, weekend last week. Yes, for sure. It was going to be at the uh, Atlanta Falcons facility. was going to have them taped. And I think 24 teams were confirmed uh, that they were going to attend the workout. Um, and then a whole bunch of stuff took place Saturday before uh, the scheduled workout. What happened, um, what didn't happen. The waiver like no and uh, the this, the that. The rece- There's a whole bunch of he say, she say. Uh, Cap put out a statement, and the NFL put out a statement. And I, will, I will say the most details we got about the whole situation was a statement the NFL made after the situation. Which is all – it was well, so detailed. I was like, dang, why we couldn't get any of this before Saturday? And that's the advantage when you're the league. You can control the narrative because you have your own NFL network, special guests. You can come right on. The one sick child – Today is a birthday party celebrating one of Deron Harmon's kids. So all the kids are at the birthday party except you this never one. you never know what you're gonna get on double coverage. Yeah, so we just got kids for and those uni- not unicorn, watching. Uh, my youngest just walked onto the scene, so she'll be sitting in with us. Um, Kai, can you say hi? Yeah, so we're gonna move right <laughs> along. So uh, like we were saying, uh, the workout didn't go as planned. The league puts out a statement, and when you're the league, you can control the narrative. You have NFL Network, you have uh, NFL analysts that are tweeting 
every other minute. And, and they tweeting it behind the scenes. They got the exclusive source. You know why? Because they got the source of the NFL. Exactly. So, And the thing is, to me, with this matter, there's one thing I think my, my big takeaway from it is at the end of the day, Kaepernick is a good enough quarterback that should still be in our league and should have been in our league probably in the past three years. So workout, no workout, we can argue back and forth about this. He should have did that. They should have did this. But at the end of the day, the man deserves an opportunity to be playing in our league. And I think you also have to say at the end of the day, he probably won't end up back in the league from this workout per se. I mean, because like you just said, we went from 24 teams down to I think they said it was seven or eight teams there. Um, so it's just it, the whole thing was like a total debacle. Um, you know, and I think no one will really know what really went down except the NFL and maybe like Cap and his lawyers. Um, but I think the thing that sucks is now people are either on one side or the other side. They're like – they're not going to be, you know, like, let me hear both sides. They're going to either be like, he should have worked out or he did the right thing. Um, but I think, like you said, it just stinks. I think the whole situation, um, and I think like a lot of guys said, it was very skeptical in the beginning of why a workout now and everything. And, you know, I think people would have guessed that something like this would have happened and a workout not really be and done my, how it should have been. My thing is, like you just said, the workout got put into motion a few days prior to Saturday. And why couldn't the workout just been, all right, we're gonna do a workout. We're gonna do the workout a week and a half from now, yeah. two weeks from now, so you can iron out all the details. But in normal fashion, I think we all kind of went into this very skeptical, hoping that it was gonna turn out for the best, but kind of prepared uh, for the way it turned out. And like an old DB coach used to tell me, prepare for war and a time of peace. So you always got to be Ooh, J-Mac dropping gems on y'all, dropping Co gems. Community outreach yesterday, Monday, uh, Dev and myself, um, just representatives of the team, went out and visited a, a local organization uh, called Mind Matters. This is one of the organizations that through our social fund we were able to give to. Uh, last year. Yeah, last year. So um, a, an amazing opportunity as a team. We were able to uh, grant them uh, $75,000 last year, which made a huge impact on the amount of kids they were able they were to help. Able, yeah, they were able to reach uh, 126 uh, kids instead of, I think it was 94. Yeah. Um, so they were able to have growth because of that. And um, what an unbelievable night to hear some of these young kids' stories. Just a, a quick briefing on the organization and what they do. Uh, they help kids um, really in the, in the Boston area, um, kids who want help in high school, ACT, high school kids. Yeah, and ACT, SAT, essay writing, um, admissions forms, yep. you know, all of that that comes along with college. And to hear some of these kids' stories, uh, uh, a lot of them first-generation uh, college graduates or soon-to-be college graduates, um, and just navigating the path to college. Um, we also got to speak to some alum. Um, some people who, quite frankly, said if it wasn't for the organization, if it wasn't for Mind Matters, they don't think they would have ended up in college. And, and, and the cool uh, thing was is, is kind of a mentor program, and each student gets two mentors that they have by their side. A lot of kids sign up by their freshman year, sophomore year, and they take them on through um, from that time period all the way up until college. And um, some of the kids that were there that were alumnus of the program that are now in college talked about how when they gain these mentors, it's just not for the next two, three years, but they've gained somebody for life. When they reach out to them, they're there. And um, just throughout the league, this matching fund that we're we're doing the team was able to come up with a ton of money the craft uh, family was able to match it and this is what it's all about is helping kind of the next generation and helping different people that otherwise wouldn't get these opportunities and just to level the playing speaking field, of so. boston uncornered one of our 2019 recipients um i was just with them you know doing some uh behind the scenes footage and, and learning about their story so um more coming soon on boston uh, uncornered but they hooked me up with a nice hoodie. They didn't give me two, sorry. Awesome, awesome. Just uh, finished up another op-ed. Op-ed came out. We talked about raising the age. Um, any of you guys who have followed some of the work we've done, um, the new criminal justice reform bill that came out a couple of years ago um, raised the low end of juvenile justice from the age of 7 to 12. Um, and now, you know, we believe Massachusetts is time to raise um, the age on the back end. Um, and we were able to write an op-ed that was um, in the Boston Herald um, where we talked about raising age, we talked about brain development, we talked about kids 
making mistakes at 17 years old and um and they've yeah. already done this in vermont right yeah where it's already been tested so um just giving kids an opportunity to make mistakes and not be penalized for the rest of their life mm -hmm. um because of a simple mistake or even a big mistake just realizing um, that there's still so much growth in our youth and uh giving them opportunities to still have a chance and and to not go through the the uh, the justice system and have to deal with that um, and, and being a part of it and all the stigmas that come along with that um, and then the court fees and, and everything. Just trying to erase some of that um, and let kids be kids. Well, let's get into some football. Um, took our talents on the roll. Feels good to be doing a wrap up on a win, baby. I know, man. The city of brotherly love, um, the home of Rocky, uh, the home of the cheese steaks. We were, uh, went Side out. note, can someone please inform Julian Edelman he is not Rocky. Like, I get it. He's like this cool story, seventh-round pick, poo quarterback in college, but he is not Rocky. He did a little too much Rocky. Um, and Jules keeps – people keep tweeting Jules about the show, and he says he's going to come on the podcast. Um, so – I'm telling you guys, tomorrow we're going to go throw out all the dates that we have for you the gotta podcast. Keep, you got to keep tweeting them. And Jules, if he's not on, it'll be because of him. Because I'm going with all the dates on Tuesday that he can come on the podcast. All right, back to Philly. Yeah, so we head to Philly on the roll. Super Bowl 52 rematch. Did that mean anything to you? Like, Absolutely. That was just a bunch of noise. No. I mean, we won, and I still don't feel like Do you feel I, got, I don't feel like I got revenge. Yeah. Because they still won the Super Bowl. Yeah. I think everyone thought like that. I mean, it felt good to win, though. But I think any win in Philly would have felt good because it's like being in Buffalo. Like, everyone was against us. And it was funny because when we go to Buffalo, we get by the stadium, and the people are already outside giving us the middle fingers. Riding in Philly, like, people seen a police escort, and they were in their cars, and it was a cold day. They were, roll, they were like, not rolling their windows all the way down, but rolling their windows Just down to enough to get out. their arm out. And they were like... It was funny as we was riding in. I was like, man. But there were maybe 50 Patriot jerseys. And I think there were a lot of Patriot fans there. But everybody knows you when you go to you Philly, wear. you wear your Patriots T-shirt and you put on a coat and you zip that coat yeah. up. Yeah. But that's why it felt so good getting a win in Philly because their fans are so real. They are Philly or nothing else. Um, and I greatly appreciate that. For sure. That's the type of environment you like to play in on the road and I think it was an important game for us obviously coming off a of bye week and also coming off a of loss to be able to get back in the W column and you know going against uh, a good quarterback going against a solid defense with Philly and being able to walk out of that stable uh, that stadium with a win was huge for us and uh, a low scoring game which I guess you probably as you look back through the past decade of your career in New England there's not a lot of wins in low scoring games obviously there's been quite a, there's been quite a bit did you do some research on that you just throw that out there I'm just saying if you probably look back at the average points well yeah Tom because Brady our, puts up and our game. offense average is usually like 30 some points either way so. the game could be 30 to but 30. we got some wins in there though that's what I'm just saying yeah. but the score could still be 30 to 10 there's not a ton you. of low you threw that out there, though. You just, you just seeing what's stuck on the wall. Yeah, whatever. Low-scoring game on both sides. What is, how does that change the game? Is that, do you love to be in those type of games, fourth quarter, last drive, and you're trying to put the game away? Yeah, it's fun, man. I, I love the focus, though, of our team. Like, they get in that drive, and they got some first downs in that drive. Um, and nobody, nobody like, nobody panicked. Panicked. nobody, you know what I mean? Everybody was just so locked in on the next play. Um, and I think it, it's just... Uh, your will is tested. And I think as a group, especially defensively, when we went back out there um, and it's 17-10 and we're like, all right, we can't give up the touchdown. And we take them all the way to fourth down. Then our offense goes out there, gets some time off the clock. Philly has another chance, you know, not much time left. And to be able to execute that situation, especially after last year, what we dealt with losing Miami with seven seconds, I mm -hmm. think was just a, um, a big growth. You know, it was growth for us to go out there and just finish a game. Um, it's something we're going to need to do again this, sometime this season. For sure. Did you realize Julian Edelman threw the only touchdown pass for us yesterday? Yeah, I mean, he warmed Sunday. the arm up. I know he was hyped because ever since Sanu came, everyone's That's been, been talking topic. to him about not, not throwing the ball again because Sanu has such a better arm. But now Jules, I mean, I think that's two touchdowns now. He's only has one in completion. I mean, the guy's doing a pretty solid. good stat line himself. Phil makes a, a great catch in the end zone while taking uh, a hit that 
uh, he didn't return to, but return from, but Phil's doing all right. So looking forward to getting him back out there. Yeah, uh, of course he's all right. He came on the podcast. Once you come on the podcast, you're like safe. Like you know, nothing bad going to happen to him. This extends Belichick's bye week win total following the bye week, obviously, to 15 and 5. Is there any special magic? Like, is there any of that Space Jam juice that that you get during the bye week that brings you back? Nah, because, I mean, Bugs Bunny made that. So, like, we don't have no bugs, you know? Back at home this upcoming <laughs> week, uh, another NFC East opponent uh, and the Cowboys. Do you remember the last time you've played the Cowboys in your time here? 2015 in Dallas, 2011 in, at the Patriots. Okay. Th that, this is another one of those games where, I mean, obviously you played against Philly a little uh, a year or two ago in the Super Bowl, but typically you don't play against these teams. What goes into those type of matchups? Uh, a lot of preparation. You know, I think it'll be a battle this week um, just to see who out prepares who because – you know, obviously both teams don't know each other that well. Like the last time we played Dallas, there was no Dak Prescott. Uh, Ezekiel no Amari, Elliott Amari wasn't Cooper. there. No Amari Cooper. Um, you know, obviously Jason Witten was still there. Um, but, you know, I think those changes, you know, you got to get to know a team. Um, so I think that'll be our challenge to try to get to know these guys um, as much as possible and, and get ready. Um, very dynamic offense, speed everywhere. Uh, you turn on the Detroit game last week; they just made a ton of big plays. So mm -hmm. uh, we'll try to ha we'll have to try to limit that and slow that down, without a doubt. And I think, like you just said, film study is so crucial in weeks like this of just getting to know not only your opponent but your matchups as well. For us in the secondary, getting to know all of the receivers from Amari Cooper to Gallup to uh, to uh, Randall Cobb in the slot. Uh, to wit, and you got to get to know all of these guys um, in a short amount of time, and it's different from when you're going against your division opponents because it's just like, all right, it's the know same. Them so well. We've seen them so many times that once you turn the film on, things just start to come back to you. Uh, this is one of those games where we're going to have to put a little bit of extra work in uh, to make sure we know them come Sunday, uh, uh, coming back home to play in front of our awesome fans. Oh, can't wait. You know, game right around Thanksgiving. Our fans will be psyched to see us. Um, it seems like this is the type of game that should be played. Patriots, Cowboys, around Thanksgiving time. Um, cool. It'll, it'll will, be, we, will we force them to go in their Navy jerseys? I don't know. That's kind of above my pay grade. Yeah, I would agree. It, it kind of is above my pay grade. I would so agree. I'm not sure. Hope maybe we bring back some throwbacks. Like, I'm trying to wear the. I'm trying to wear the, like you, the royal blue jerseys. Are you starting a rumor? I don't know. I'm not starting a rumor. Maybe maybe they were deciding and they'll watch the podcast and, and see. I'll send a clip of this to Bill. Throwbacks, Car Carmelo Anthony, <laughs> throwback type player. Wearing 0-0. Zero, zero. Greg Ostertag. Do you see why he's wearing 0-0? Zero, zero? Uh, no, I don't. It's not really 0-0. Zero, zero. It's the infinity sign. Ah. Never ending. But shout out Melo like fine wine. But his, at some point his career will end. I'm just saying, he's saying because they thought it was an end, but he's still here. But I didn't read all of it, but I yeah, just saw. Okay. Right, but it still will be an end. But nice to see Carmelo Anthony back in the league. Another guy, like we were saying, he's better than other guys in NBA. So it's cool to see Treblers had a need at that kind of stretch four position. Mm -hmm. And Carmelo fills that, a guy that can put the ball in the basket. Uh, I'm interested to see what his debut looks like and uh, what impact he has. He's obviously going to be another scoring option for them outside of Lillard and McCullough. And also brings scoring. And Anthony Simons. Yeah, and brings yes yeah, another sizable scorer. You know what I mean? So uh, it, it, it's going to be interesting. Though. He said though they wanted him to come back right away, and he was like, whoa. He wanted to go uh, to Portland, get in shape, get in game shape. He said he had been preparing – to play, he said, but he also started to prepare to not play. Mm. He said, just from a mental standpoint, he had to kind of prepare himself for if it didn't happen again. He said, so now that he knows it's going to happen, it's just a little different to prepare and um, seem very excited to be able to work out and get back into that mentality of like, I'm going out there to be the best player I can be. So um, I I'm very interested and ready to go to see him. Um, back to the league, but. Here we go again. The New York Jets um, decided to fine Quincy Inouye $27,000, $27,900 for mistreatment. And I actually trained with Quincy Inouye in the offseason. Awesome guy, one of the hardest working guys I've been around. Probably one of the most physically talented guys, big, strong, fast. Um, but he's on injured reserve. And his wife is a veteran, 
and he decided that he wanted to take his wife out for lunch um, around Veterans Day. I'm not sure if it was on Veterans Day. I believe or... it was, but the issue comes, he should have let the team know beforehand. Yeah, and he said that. He said and he didn't. But he is on injured reserve. They find a guy so when you're on injured... who is a leader on the team who's on injured reserve who cannot – Help about them to say, win. Explain to injured reserve. Yes, he's on injured reserve. Means meetings. he cannot play. Does he, are you at meetings? Uh, you, you could can be, be, but I mean, there's a lot of guys that go on injured reserve. And you don't see them, and they leave. Like the team allows them to go uh, rehab elsewhere. But obviously, he's a guy who's still there. And since they find him for missing rehab, that means he's. Pro- I guess he's been in rehab every day. Yeah. So obviously, he's probably a leader on the team, and he stuck around. But it's just not great incentive. Uh, on a team to find a guy who's there and he's not there for one day seems like two some, days two days seems like something you can just have a talk to him about um but instead they find him twenty seven thousand, and he he came out and said usually he's not the type to go to social media but when he got to find he was fired up so many guys he said so many guys in the locker room was like that's wrong like and i think it's just a bad it's just a bad Thing when you okay. see the Jets have been involved over and over again okay. uh, with so many different things with uh, Azamelli, now with Anunwa, with Falk, uh, who has fo- also yeah. filed uh, a grievance against the team. So um, I don't know how many guys are walking around in March saying they want to be Jets. I mean, we'll come, we'll see. Um, money picture, seems to make people, not many. you know, money makes people usually forget about some things, but um, I don't know. It just doesn't seem right to. You would hope your your team treating your players, you know, a little better than this. I don't know. I'm not on the Jets, so I can't really. Yeah, but it's it's one of those tough things where I feel like, like you just said, he's on IR. But at the end of the day, rules are rules, and uh, for him, obviously, he should have did it beforehand and let them know what the situation was. But at the same time, at the end of the day, was it a twenty seven thousand dollar mistake? When things aren't really game related, it's hard to imagine. You're going to give somebody a max type of fine like that. And when you're in season and you're trying to get things going right for your team on the field, do you really want a distraction of finding one of your starters? One of your, you know, I'm not even sure if he's a, he might have been a captain this year. I'm not sure. Um, but one of your guys, 27, to now create another distraction off the field seems a little crazy. So we talked about earlier um, the matching fund uh, for our players um, this year. New England, we're able to raise $450,000 to be spread out across five different organizations uh, locally here for us. And um, the whole purpose of this was um, the injustices that we see going on uh, in our country and our society as players. Let's stand up and let's be able to put uh, our money to where our mouths are. And we we say we want to do this, we want to do that. Let's obviously put up or shut up. And I think that's what guys did this year. Um, almost almost about 100% of guys actually gave to this fund. I think it was 97, 98%. Um, and uh, Mr. Kraft, and they matched it. And we were able to bring $450 in to be able to spread across. That's really going to make a huge impact in this area. And for those who haven't uh, seen the press release, um, as players, we were able to donate to Boston Healthcare for the Homeless, uh, Boston Uncornered hoodie I have on, uh, Commonwealth Kitchen, uh, Roca, and We Belong. Um, we Belong is founded uh, by a police officer. It helps uh, at-risk Boston teens. Uh, myself and Jason spoke to uh, a group of kids from We Belong in the offseason, um, and I've done multiple different events with the two officers um, who started We Belong. Um, Roca is an organization that helps kids um, in, in I say kids, but young adults um, who have been involved with streets and gangs. And it's an outreach program that really deals with, you know, different people once they get out of jail, um, of turning their life around and and help them out. Some of them have been through some pretty serious situations. Um, Commonwealth Kitchen um, is also a business. It helps people learn how to kind of get going in the the business with food and different things, Um, but also... Um, it helps to have food, healthy food in the community um, and access to really regions and, and people who don't really have that access. Um, Boston on Kerner, uh also kind of deals with gang involved youth, um, but this steers them to college. Not The goal is not to just 
you know, get your GED or get it's for kids to attend college and graduate college. Um, and they set the standards high and young adults, they go out there and they reach those standards. Um, and then lastly, Boston Healthcare for the Homeless. Um, Derek Rivers, Dietrich Wise have been there um, and rounded uh, with some of these doctors who go on the streets um, and just give health care to some of the homeless people on the streets. And uh, Derek Rivers told me probably the, one of the most humbling things was all these people were homeless on the street. They didn't want anything from them other than to just have a conversation with them, just to talk to them, spend some time with them. Um, but also another awesome organization that brings health care to the homeless and, and helps them, um, you know, just the things they're dealing with to make sure that they're healthy. So um, very humbling to be a part of this. And um, it's been awesome for me to just see how much guys want to be involved and give back. For sure, like many other organizations, but very cool when I got to this team, uh, the emphasis that is put on. Uh, of being able to be back in the community and volunteering and doing things, whether it's Play 60 events, whether it's things with social injustice, whether it's uh, uh, being there for our veterans, no matter what it is, um, this team, this organization uh, puts a priority on its players being in the community and spending hours on hours and doing things to give back. Um, so very special uh, organization and individuals uh, that do their best to, uh, to maintain that. Um, but let's get into this. This deal is... So I had something in the group chat section, but I'm going to just bump it up. Okay. Because it goes hand in hand. 15 years ago today, the, the malice, malice at the palace. So it just so happens, 15 years ago to today, probably the big Ron Artest, Jermaine O'Leary, Steven Jackson, all get into a fight with the fans. Jermaine O'Leary was started had, by had a sliding a, punch. And the fight was started by a fan, similar to a story we're about to go to next. The fans started the thing, but only people we talk about is Ron Artest, Jermaine O'Neal, Steven Jackson, who got in a fight and beat up some of the fans uh, in their they landed arena. some of them haymakers. Yeah, I mean, I think I think that day though, fans realized these professional athletes are humans. You, you might and you might want to step. You might want to think twice before you step out there with those with those great white sharks. You don't jump in there swimming. And <laughs> one thing about watching the Discovery Channel and getting out there, but. Last week, Thursday, fight breaks out, Cleveland versus Steelers. Again, started probably kind of by Mason Rudolph. For sure. Started the fight. Um, Kicked to the groin. Got it going. Trying to off the helmet. Um, not saying that Miles Garrett was, was right by what he did, but they get going. Uh, helmet comes off. Mason Rudolph's helmet comes off. Miles Garrett swings it at him. Not what we really want to see on a football field. Um, Pouncey goes to protect his quarterback, which you do want to see on the football field, guys protecting their guys. And he, he starts throwing punches, kicks, um, just a bad overall scene for the game of football. Very bad. Um, get right into it. Miles, Miles Garrett suspended indefinitely. Um, Pouncey yep. suspended three, three games. games. Larry Ogunjobi suspended one, one game. game. Ogunjobi came in and pushed uh, Mason Rudolph kind of as – it wasn't over. It was like, got, got, I kind of guess still happening. Pushed him to the ground. Mason Rudolph suspended zero games. And he'll be fine. Fine, nothing like being suspended a game, losing a game check. Um, do you think Mason Rudolph should have been suspended as well? I do because I, I this is why I think he should be suspended. Larry Ogunjobi, o Ogunjobi. Ogunjobi came and had a very minimal role in what was going on. And he pushed him, and he got suspended a game. So, therefore, that told me kind of whoever did anything wrong in this incident kind of was going to get suspended. Mm -hmm. So, I thought everyone involved should have been suspended at least a game if that's how you're going to do it. And I think when you kind of rank, you know, on fault, you know, you got Miles Garrett at the top. You got Mason Rudolph probably second because nothing else happens you know, without so, this. So get suspended for getting doinked over the head with your own helmet? You get suspended because you're involved. So, like, Miles Garrett deserved the most out of suspension. He's appealing because I don't think you're allowed to really be there's suspended. Nothing, I don't think there's anything written to be suspended and definitely for an on-the-field violation. Yeah, so they should give him some – they should give him the amount, amount of games, games they're thinking of. Um, and then um, Pouncey is going to also appeal – which he should because obviously he was wrong. You're not supposed to throw punches on the field. So, but he should try to get his appealing, get it as low as possible. Yeah. Um, and I don't know, is Larry appealing? I haven't seen that. I don't yet. know. I would assume so. I would assume everybody yeah. is. But try to get it reduced to a fine. I mean, 
Initially, I understood Mason Rudolph not being suspended. And I think I, I, I kind of gravitated towards your level of thinking is that when you look at the situation, the fact that everybody involved got suspended except him makes you just kind of wonder, just like, well, I don't understand why all parties involved were suspended uh, at least a minimum of one game, and he was the only guy who wasn't. So yeah. obviously his role in it um, wasn't the same as obviously a Miles Garrett and a, a, a Pouncey because of the way it looked. In the way it appeared, but, but he had a role in it. When you when you go through those replays and you see uh, the kick to the groin, you see him trying to rip off uh, Miles's helmet. You see that he definitely played a role in the start of that fight, and because of that, should have received probably a little bit more discipline that made it a little bit more equal to the others uh, involved. But that's the way the league works, and um, we're gonna move our podcast along the same way the news cycle does. Because when that fight took place Friday, we came in and um, Bill said it to us. There's 32 teams in the NFL. There's 20 coaches. And every last player, every last coach, every last trainer, every last equipment manager was talking about that in the entire NFL. You but that go, was just for Friday, huh? Just for Friday. Because then you went to college and the same exact every college in the country is talking about it. But then Saturday happened. And everybody was talking we, about Kaepernick. We no forgot one cared all about, about it. Miles Garrett, about Mason Rudolph. It was all about Cap. The workout should have been this. The workout should have been that. And that's kind of that's kind of a lesson to be learned of just when we think we make mistakes or whatever the case may be and you feel like everybody's against you and it can't get any worse, there'll be something else that's going to happen soon and everybody will move on. You gotta be, that's why you always got to be ready to move on and, and correct what you had a mistake on and just be ready to be your best you. And um, talking about being your best you, Antonio Brown, back on social media today, working on being the best him. Issues of apology to RKK and the Patriots. Um, I don't. I really don't have anything. I, I spoke last week. Is, is Le'Veon is, Bell said he thought his former teammate and friend should just not go on social media as much. I tended to agree with Le'Veon <laughs> Bell. Um, so, but is this a step towards uh, reconciliation? Is it a chance AB maybe walks through? Uh, well, we, you saying will we be singing again? this tone? Reunited and it feels so good. The look on her face. I don't think we'll be. Singing. Did that sound good, Kai Kai? I don't think. I don't think we'll no? be singing that tune. No. Oh, she didn't like that. But do you think there's a possible reunion? Do you think this could possibly Who knows? be the first step? Who knows? I mean, in life, usually never can go wrong with a public apology. I mean. Who doesn't like a public apology? When you see someone cheats or something, they jump on their Instagram or their Twitter and they say, I just want to apologize. Man, people eat that up. So you never know. Maybe. Maybe we'll have a new teammate again. Maybe. You know, who time, knows? Time will tell. Tua uh, gets Todd, injured, has hip surgery. To the, the, hate to see it, but seeing him in that hospital bed. Tua's bed, elite. Playing music. Um, what just, is that called that he was playing? Oh, I forget. Isn't it a ukulele? A ukulele. There you go. It's the reason why I'm the main guy on this show. No, that's not true. It's the reason. Incredible to see him in such high spirits because everybody else is feeling so bad for him and uh, this, that, and the third. And he's just ready to get, get going with his rehab. But this does bring up the question, when you have players like Tua where they're talking about being top 10 picks and this, that, and the third, and he already suffered an ankle injury in which he had surgery for and came right back pretty fast, does it come a point in the season where it's just like, eh. Should Tua have shut it down? Hey. The same can be asked for when we get to Ohio State and we talk about Chase Young. Is there a point to return to Ohio State? Or right now, the fact that you're suspended, do you just say, hey, the, the hell with college football. I love my university. Had a great time. Appreciate you. But I'm about to head to L.A., to Florida, wherever these places are. And I'm about to get ready to start training for the combine and getting ready for my NFL career. That's what Wiseman's about to do with his NBA career. Yeah. Um, I'm not against it. I'm really not. You know, there's all these rules with NCAA that stop guys from doing so much. You can, um, like I said, I've been, I, I just finished listening to Jay, Jay Williams' book. So, um, and he even said it. Like, I can go and sweat out a pair of sneakers and a jersey. Um, but if I if I sign it and sell it to get some money for myself, I'm done. Done. Um, and then now, Tua gets hurt. If Tua can never play again, what's NCAA going to do for him? Nothing. They keep selling his jersey, though. Alabama's going to keep making money. NCAA's going to keep making money. Um, so I'm not against that. Christian McCaffrey sat out that bowl game. 
And if you look at Christian McCaffrey now, he made the right decision. If he would have got hurt, it would have been totally different. You look at Jalen Smith, luckily it worked out. But, yeah. you know, he bangs his knee up in that game. And, you Took know, a while, now, he, but now he's back playing second round football. pick, he got, a, he got a new contract. I just um, think you have to make the decision that you think best fits you, best fits your yeah, family. Yeah, definitely. And you just can't put too much into, I got to be there for my teammates. I got to be there for this institution that's granted me a scholarship because it's each, everybody's watching their own back. So it's just like at the end of the day, if you feel it's best for you to move on, hey, with all, go ahead with all power and, and do your thing. You know, that's what I, I think. I agree with that's you 100%. What, that's what I think it comes These college down to. kids should do what they feel is right. And I, and I think one thing that helps these kids probably make good decisions or all the, the the current players, former players, speaking out and advocating for them, I think that is awesome. So as guys, as players, we got to continue to do that. Yeah, for sure. Eric Reed and Stephen A. Smith going back and forth on Twitter. This is another example to me of just like this whole thing, like pick up a phone, text, call, but just get it. All. It's just so like we keep saying we're, we're you're, you're trying to support and do for African-Americans. And then you have two – um, huge people, obviously Eric Reed, an NFL player, has made a, a huge impact on his community. Stephen A. Smith, uh, a, a guy that's on TV that I'm pretty sure throughout his career, he's had to break through a lot of barriers mm -hmm. and do different things. So it's just like, hey, let's try to support each other instead of just talking down on one another and, and see how far we can go in doing so. Yeah, I agree. And, and you know, I, I think like you say, you just hate to see the back and forth and um, the belittling of each other. Um, offer really when you break it down at the core a lot of topics that individually people agree with the, the mythology of how you get there and everything might be different and that's okay um, but I agree with you like let's just stop tearing each other down let's stop name calling um, all because you disagree it's okay to disagree listen to each other if you continue to disagree move on go your separate ways continue to fight the good fight though yeah for sure um, took to Twitter to bring up some questions. The first question I got got that I thought was pretty good. What? Hold on, don't skip my other group chat thing, man. Oh, I missed it. Yeah, we were in group chat uh, yesterday, and for all you guys that don't know, Phillip Rivers is one of my favorite quarterbacks other than Tom Brady. Uh, been a Phillip Rivers fan really since uh, coming out of the draft. Took a visit to San Diego, uh, pre-draft visit. Met Phillip Rivers, super down to earth. Uh, then spoke to him again at the Pro Bowl, super down to earth. And he's a competitor, he's feisty. <laughs> And in my group chat, they were dogging him, talking about, um, you know, he had a bad game. He had a bad last two games that were pretty bad. Um, but trying to go at, go at his career, so I hit the stats. You know, six time, six all time in passing, six all time in, in touchdowns, and and the bottom and the thirty four all time in interceptions. Like that, I mean, the numbers are awesome. So then they start talking about playoffs and all that. You know, you can't win when you're in a group chat. A bunch of. But does that take away from? Um, no Super Bowl appearances. Uh, I, I think it is a great record is. in the playoffs. If you mention him, I have no problem with you bringing it up. But, but don't tell me his greatness. don't tell me my man wasn't great though. Like I'm not trying to hear that. I can re I can respect that. I'm trying to hear but that. question we got from the game on Sunday: What happened to Chase Winovich's hair, and do we refer to him as Thor? Thor, Thor maybe, was the last. Maybe thing. they needed a close up of his hair. So for you guys who haven't well. seen it, I don't know if it's, it has to be on social media and at some point, somewhere, but Chase decided to dye his hair. The guy's already blonde, but I guess he wanted to be blonder. What, what is that blonde called? It's like between like blonde and like gray, I guess. It's between Daenerys, Mother of Dragons, and who else? And, and Prince Elsa. And Elsa. And Elsa. From uh from Frozen. Frozen. That's 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 the, what the names so you said were you calling them Thor? The only names I heard were Elsa and Khaleesi's. But Chase went out there and played good football. He so did. He's tried to he, – and this was all his doing. This wasn't a rookie thing. He went home and decided to dye his hair, and it just did not turn out the way But he that is hoping. a rookie thing because he tried something. He didn't have no idea what he was doing. He tried That's to a rookie wear a hat thing. for most of the day, but eventually had to take it. So, guys, go to Chase's page. Go tell him how crazy you think his hair looked. Find the picture. Or tell him how much you love his hair. Whatever, or However you're feeling, let him know. Uh, what's your opinion? Because us, we're bald, so we're jealous of his hair no matter what. What's your opinion on a 17-game season? I don't have an opinion. It sounds like the dumbest thing I've heard. Ah, uh, that's a stretch. Uh, why would? Why, this is my thing. Why? No, no, no. The NFL can't say our most important thing is player safety, let's add a game. 
Yeah, but this is my thing with it. This is the whole thing with it. How, but how do you how do you say anything other than that? Unless you tell you're, me but you're the taking most away, thing is making money. You're taking away a preseason game as well. Th- that doesn't that's not the same but, thing. But making money is very important. So it's the number one thing. If you say if you tell I'm me I'm okay with that. Okay, I'm, if you I'm tell to- me that totally if the league okay says that. that, then cool. Okay, I'm totally okay. And I say I as disagree player, that player safety should be more important. Yeah, you gotta advocate for yourself as a player. But games are gonna be played regardless. Practice, you're gonna be practicing. My thing with it, the seventeenth game, if you take away a preseason game and you add a seventeenth game, we have to figure out, okay, how much more money is that generating? And then once we figure that out, now we have to find a way But to, it's one game check, no matter what. But no, because right now your salary would just be split up. Like if you're making one hundred one million dollars is now just split up over another week. My thing would be is, no, we need to figure out how much will another game generate money-wise. And now that now we need to figure out a formula in which how is that money being dispersed amongst players, PA, all of that type I stuff. I hear you. I'd rather just not have the game. I'm not opposed to it. I think Because I don't think little, that one game will bring us that much money. Uh, a little bit more thought goes game. into it. But I can respect, I can respect your thought process. Uh, yeah. I, I'm Norma Tech it. comeback of the week. Norma, Norma Tech comeback of the week. Was it was tough to decide, so I went with two. Um, Carmelo Anthony is back. I think that is by far the best comeback. Guys have been talking about this. He's had his black ops sessions in New York in the offseason where the likes of C.J. McCullough, Russell Westbrook, James Harden, LeBron, KD, they've all come, but nobody's been better than Hoodie Mello on the black ops. Is now back in the NF- NBA playing on Portland. Um but then another comeback of the week that I really love, Alex Smith, quarterback of the Washington Redskins. His wife posted a video, um, and I think a lot of times. Year ago, today, right, the injury. And play? a lot of times when guys get injured, how Alex Smith got injured, everyone forgets they don't care anymore. And she just showed a video that showed his freaking injury. I mean, he was in a cast that was then in a metal, like, tracked a metal thing around it. Um, from being in a wheelchair inside of like a Sprinter van. He's in the wheelchair. They cleared the seats out, and his kids are are seatbelt in in the back as he's in the wheelchair. Then he went from doing that to kind of walking, to taking drop back slowly, to uh, drop back a little faster. Then running on a treadmill. Like like that warmed my heart to see because I'm sure – you know, his wife has been with him every step of the way. And to yeah. see that journey um, and him trying to come back to the NFL, um, you, you, Alex Smith, you, Carmelo Anthony, Norma, Norma Tech, Tech come back of the players week. of the week. Losing a weekend is going to have to go to Patriots fans everywhere. Rob Gronkowski has not announced his return to the New England Patriots. And as of right now, he will not be catching touchdown passes from Tom Brady. So sorry, Patriots fans, but because of that, you have lost the weekend. And shout out to Donovan Mitchell on winning the weekend. A young kid um, was being bullied at his school, and Donovan Mitchell uh, took the time out to invite him to uh, a Utah Jazz game. Gave him sneakers, correct? Signed sneakers. Signed, uh, autographed sat with him, sneakers, chopped sat up with him, him talked yeah. talk with him, man. Hopefully that um, was a big boost uh, to that young man, and uh, he realizes that uh, he is special, um, great, probably a great kid, and uh, building confidence. And that's one of those things as kids you go through, and bullying and getting used to being comfortable and all that type stuff. So huge impact Donovan Mitchell went out of his way to make. I'm a name drop. So Donovan Mitchell's cousin, I grew up, we grew up with him, Terry Baltimore. So I know Donovan Mitchell good people because I know his people. His people good people. So Donovan Mitchell, keep doing what you're doing. Yeah, all of that, talking about good people. More than an out athlete, Kelvin Beecham uh, was named the Week 10 NFLPA Community MVP for donating $10,000 of his own money to United Way of the greater Newark uh, area and setting up a drive that generated 26,000 bottles of clean waters for residents in the uh, most, most of which he personally uh, delivered himself. He said it's an honor to be the first player to win community MVP four times. Uh, he was also named MVP in 2014, 2016, and 2018. Uh, and he's he quoted, dominating out here. So he better win the award at the end of the year. 
for the year year long uh, community MVP. Yeah, I'm. We didn't get it this this year. We're not gonna get into that though. But he said, for me, a spirit of of giving is a foundational principle that uh, was ingrained in me since childhood. So Calvin yeah. Beach was an awesome dude. Worked yeah. with him at uh, uh, at the Players Coalition. Always putting others in front. Uh, before himself and a true heart to serve. So awesome, awesome, awesome. man. Thank you guys for tuning in. Episode 11. Uh, we're here for you every week. Double coverage here with the McCordy twins. And as you guys hey, know. Hey, you got to talk. If you're going to be on here the whole time, you got to say something. Say hi to the people. Say As hi. you guys know, you can find us on YouTube or iTunes, Spotify, all of that good stuff. Kai Kai. Kai Kai. Can you say, Mama, we made say, it? Say, Mama, we made it. No. Mama, we made it! Stage fright. Uh, all you have to do, make sure when you do that, you go on there, you hit the little red button. It says subscribe. Make sure you subscribe and tell all your friends. And also, another quick shout-out to our partners here at Double Coverage, Boston Medical Center, Embrace Kids Foundation, and Norma Tech Recovery System. Thank you, Kai. What's your name? Thank you, Kai, for joining our show today. You were a great person to have. You didn't add any content, but you weren't too loud. Can so you clap it up? See you guys next week.